Now taking it back at the foul line is Davis, and the jumper is good. The Fordham bench erupts as Jamaris Davis has now joined the 1,000-point club for the Fordham Rams. 1,000th point for Jamaris Davis, quite the feat. Welcome again to this edition of the Stephanie Gaten Show. My name is James Gardner, to my right is Dan Lowry, and to my left is the namesake of the Stephanie Gately Show, the head coach of the Fordham University Rams, Stephanie Gately Coach. How are you today? I'm doing well. I'm with, God, how, you always ask that question, but when you're two young, good-looking guys, how can my life be bad, right? Well, it's only, it's only... It's only tradition to ask that yeah, question, but we true. know that you that's always fair. have a great time on this show. And you guys had a, a interesting week of games last week, going on the road twice to play two quality opponents in Boston College and Albany. Unfortunately, you came up short in both games. What what do you take out of that week? The first game, Boston College. I was, uh, to be honest, I was disappointed in the effort just because we got off to such a slow start. And, and I don't have a problem because you know, young kids, you know, offensively they might be stagnant. But my my concern, as always, is is from the defensive standpoint. We just had so many breakdowns, and then I knew, quite frankly, I thought Albany was going to be the toughest test, tougher test out of the weekend, just because I, you know, been watching a lot of tape, and they're just extremely physical and extremely athletic and big, and um, they put us on our heels early. So. Uh, I felt that from that game, I think we grew and took a step forward in that game. So you mentioned that they were uh, your team got off to a slow start, but we saw in the fourth quarter of both the games at Boston College and at Albany some great effort from your team. Is there one player or something you credit for those fourth quarter runs? It, you know what? I think it's more, Dan, that when we score. For some reason, we, d we have to develop the philosophy that we everything begins and ends with defense. So regardless of whether we score or not, we, s we hang around. And the problem is I think we developed some energy because we got some buckets, and then that and, – and the result of us being a little more focused on defense. So that's where we got to kind of change our hats and just say, hey, listen, let's let's first get good shots because the last two games we started each each possession with a turnover. Right. And not only did we start with a turnover, then each possession has started with their best three-point shooter getting a three-off. So the details have been lost. So now we're not only taking care of the ball, we're not playing defense. One thing that stands out to me from the box score – of the Albany game is some of the minutes stats that your girls played. Three players playing 40-plus minutes, G playing 40, Brianna Cavanaugh playing 40, and Lauren Holden, the Iron Woman, so to speak, playing the full 45 minutes, all four quarters and overtime. Is that a testament to their durability, or is that something that you would rather not see? Well, the best players play. You know, and they're three of our best players, and and they're three of our well most well conditioned players. So I mean, they have the endurance to be able to to handle those minutes. Not all kids do. We obviously had to watch Mary because she was coming back. Um, Joey, you know, again was struggling against Albany, so we limited her minutes. And then it was a seesaw. I mean, Haley played well against Albany and struggled a little bit against BC. You know, so it was a seesaw, and you know that's part of you know what happens with freshmen. So Jamaris Davis, 17 points and 17 rebounds as she broke the 1,000-point barrier for the Fordham Rams at Albany. What does that say about her performance, and how much does she mean to this team? You know what's crazy, and that's why I was talking to G for a long time, is that I as much as, as good as those numbers are, believe it or not, she's capable of better. Like, and I showed her some tape of where 50-50 rebounds could have been 70-30 if, if she blocked out. On the offensive end, she pursued probably 30% of the offensive boards when we only shot 30-some percent. If she pursued 70%, she has probably two or three more rebounds. It's not unheard of for her, in my opinion, to get tw have a couple 20-rebound games. She's capable of doing that. Oh, she can – honestly, she we she can average 20 a night, it seems, on some – on uh, no, many occasions. She's always capable of, of tearing up the box score, 17 and 17 – is that just like ho hum to see that now out of her? It, it, for for me, it I see that and it and it doesn't even. It, of course, it jumps out of the box score, but for her, it's just like another day at the office. You know, with G, 
I think we've become accustomed to it because of our athletic ability. I mean, especially when you get those numbers, knowing you're the person that people are identifying. I think, you know, for her, where I'd like to see her is a cut back on her turnovers because sometimes she's being double or triple team and she's trying to do too much rather than just, you know, have some trust in her teammates even though they're young. Um, but she's capable of those numbers because she's a gifted athlete, you know, and she's worked hard to improve areas of her game. And so she she's not as easy to defend anymore because she has that jump shot now. So, I mean, she's made herself a much more difficult person to match up with. So James mentioned the playing time and the, the minutes that some of the players got, particularly Haley Gillis and Joey Klug getting north of 20 minutes. Was that more due to Jamaris Davis foul trouble or was that because you want them to have an immediate impact on this team? A combination of both. I mean, when we played BC, they played four guards. When we played Albany, they played two bigs. So we were able to get more minutes out of our bigs than I was able to against BC because the bigs don't match up as well. Like, G can cover anybody, one through five. Um, you know, Haley and, and Joey, mm, not so much, you know. So, therefore, their, mi their minutes are limited depending on the opponent. Now, for Albany, of course, they were led uh, by Jessica Fekier with 27 points on 10 of 19 shooting. I, I recall her even from last year's thriller uh, at the Rose Hill Gym. This one also an overtime thriller. First of all, what is it about when you when the Rams and the Great Danes meet up? It's all, it always seems that there are fireworks. Both really competitive teams. You know, I think they're very well coached. I think, you know, and again, that's the biggest challenge. You go there on their opening game and, you know, and they're dropping the banner and there's a lot of emotions involved. And the last time we went up there and they did the same thing, we stole that game from them. And this year, you know, we fell short, but, you know, we, we're we playing, and, you know, and I got to take a step back sometimes and realize that we're playing so many untested kids. And once we can get these valuable minutes under their belt, I, th I think that, you know, it's going to really pay off come, comp come conference time. And you mentioned the inexperience from your Fordham's Ram Fordham Rams team. This is a U Albany team that has seen six straight tournament appearances. How do you prep such a young team for that challenge? It's hard. I mean, you just got to realize that, you know, like everything we do in practice, you got to learn to win because that, t that team's not going to give you anything. You got to take it. And so you saw that in the first half. We were on our heels. We gave up an offensive rebound in the last possession of the second quarter, and they hit that bank three. And, you know, uh, Believe it or not, the two points of emphasis for that game were who wants it more and, and rebounding. And what it was came down to that one possession of they got that rebound and who wanted it more, they did. Otherwise, you know, we, we are at 2 1 at this point. So now that your two games, your first two road games of the season are out of the way, how do you think your team, your young team, handled the task of going on the road? I think overall pretty well. I think they were able to keep things within the lines. I think they understand now because I think playing the kids game and playing in front of a couple thousand people at BC and then playing the opening game, you know, f you know, against Albany, against a really good team that's dropping their banner. I think those, those are valuable experiences. And so therefore, I think once you get those type of experience under your belt, not a whole lot is going to bother you. All right. Thank you, coach. And when we come back, we will speak to two of the members of this Fordham Rams side. We'll be talking to you in a little bit, coach. Stay with us. James Cargan, Dan DiAlio here with our two very special guests, freshman Joanna Klug and junior Lauren Holden. Guys, it's it's great to have you with us. Sort of a, an odd couple of sorts here. One of your ta one of our tallest and shortest players <laughs> on the team. Thank you. Yes, Thanks. it's good to be here. It's great to have you. And Joey, I want to start with you first. You come all the way from Germany. The Deutschland, yes, if, that's I, right. if I am <laughs> correct. How did how did Fordham University discover you over there, or how did you discover Fordham University? Um, actually, it was through my national team summers, where I played like with my national team, and then um, I already already knew a player who played here, so I kind of got into contact with the coaches and. Then we like got to talk through Skype, and I really liked it. And yeah, that's how we got like to each other. So Joey, obviously coming all the way from Germany, how how big of a challenge has it been transitioning to Fordham? Um, it's actually been pretty easy so far. Of like good teammates, they helped me out. 
It is a great atmosphere here with the Fordham women's basketball team, and especially with Coach Gately, who is used to having so many foreign international players on this team. Lauren, you've uh, transitioned in a bit of a different way this season. Uh, your freshman year, you were sort of thrust into the starting point guard role. Last year, you started every game and on a much, much more veteran-related team. This year, you're one of the more experienced leaders on the team. How have you sort of transitioned from being following the sort of veterans on the team and becoming a leader yourself? Um, well, it's definitely been a challenge just because I feel like sometimes uh, I can still like think like a freshman and um, I just feel like it's been like at the time has gone by so fast that it's like, oh my gosh, I'm a junior. But um, everyone on the team has been great. I know we have a lot of younger players, but they make it a lot easier because of how um, hard they work and just their great attitude. So it's been awesome. So one thing we saw during the Albany game was during the rally in the fourth quarter, you would circle up your team and, you know, fire them up with some passion, with some uh, motivating words. Mm -hmm. What are the kind of things you say to your teammates as, as a captain on this team? How do you get your team fired up and, you know, com keep going on that run? Um, I think that it's important that when the team goes through runs or if the other team is going through runs, we have to stay composed. So um, in certain situations, like if we have that run, I'll try to, you know, hype everyone up and say, come on, like if we get a score, we got to get a stop on defense and just keep everybody uh, together as a unit so we can pull through with uh, those games. Joey, you've uh, you come into this team with a lot of height other than yourself, of course. You've got Haley Gillis on this team. Mary Golding, another forward, and, of course, Jamaris Davis. How have you been able to play off of each of them and learn from them, especially Jamaris? Like, especially G is, um, like, a great post player, and she's really challenging, like, us in practice, which makes us, like, better every day. I think playing against her is, like, a great opportunity. Yeah. So playing 22 minutes in the Albany game, Joey, as Jamaris Davis had foul trouble. How big of an opportunity was that for you as a freshman to come in and see that kind of minutes? Um, it was great, especially that we made it to overtime. But, yeah, unfortunately we lost. And I think it was a great learning lesson we took away from this game. But, yeah, still we want to get the win. So I hope next game we get the win. Yes. Now, speaking of minutes played, Lauren, you – Played every minute in the Albany game, all 45 minutes, all four quarters, and the overtime period. First of all, is that something that you had done before? I don't ever recall uh, you playing all 40, pl all the minutes of a particular game. I know Samantha Clark is on your coaching staff. She seemed to do that every game in her senior year. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really remember if there was any last year, but um, yeah, so far this year. It has been like that, but um, I just want to do whatever the I just want to do whatever uh, I can to help the team win. So hopefully, when I'm in for that those many minutes, I can uh, do something is to it, help. Is the it team difficult win. to handle that kind of a workload? Um, I think sometimes it can be, but uh, in between like uh, timeouts and things like that, you get your breather, so it's it's not too too bad. So obviously, playing 45 minutes in this one two straight games where you played significant amount of minutes. Do you look for that to continue this season? And if so, how, how do you get your teammates around you to contribute and help you out to get these wins? Um, well, I, again, like uh, however many minutes I do get in, I just want to – that time that I am in, I just want to do whatever um, it takes to win. But um, just keeping the team together, it's just, you know, keeping them together through the highs and lows. And if we do get – um, if we're in the middle of the game and things aren't going our way, we got to stay together and just stay united um, to pull through with hopefully a win. Now, of course, before you guys take on Northern Colorado on Friday, there is the Thanksgiving holiday on Thursday. Lauren, you live somewhat local, even though it's a bit of a hike down to Cape May. But, Joanna, uh, of course, you being from Germany, what, uh, what do you plan on doing for the Thanksgiving holiday? So we've got practice on Thursday, of course, to prepare for a game on Friday. But afterwards, I will go like to my teammate's house, Lauren Murphy, 
and yeah hopefully have a nice dinner <laughs> so one thing that coach gately asked us to do when we were in albany was to go around and each give uh you know a tradition that we do for thanksgiving or christmas holiday so do you guys have any thanksgiving traditions that you you and your family does for uh celebrating the thanksgiving holiday um, I know for my family, uh, my dad gets excited about Christmas kind of early, so we always have our two Christmas trees up for Thanksgiving. They're not decorated, but they're always up. And uh, usually Thanksgiving's at our house, and that's that's pretty much about it. Yeah, um, in Germany we don't have Thanksgiving, so that's something totally new. But, yeah, I will see how it will go. <laughs> All brand new traditions will certainly be made on <laughs> yes on thursday <laughs> girls thank you so much for for joining us here and best of luck on friday happy thanksgiving to both of you and we hope to see you back here soon thank, thank you. you thanks guys james cargan and dan diorio back here with head coach stephanie gately we will now look ahead to the week ahead and you only have one game from now until the time we film our next show, and that is against the Northern Colorado Bears, an unlikely opponent to come into the Rose Hill Gym. What do you expect to see from them? Well, there's a little bit of background there. I mean, they have a couple kids from, you know, a couple Kiwis from New Zealand, and so I think that was one of the draws is because some of their families are coming in town, and our Kiwis families are in town, and so I think that was part of it. I, I mean, Cammie Etheridge just does an outstanding job. I mean, she, they're so well coached. They're, they're a lot of fun to watch. Um, they're very guard-oriented. Um, one statistic that jumps out is, you know, it's very rare to see a team that has more assistant turnovers. You know, and they have that obviously this season, but last season as, w season as well. They've knocked off DePaul in their home, DePaul's home opener. They knocked off LSU last week. They go to Quinnipiac tomorrow. So we could be looking at, you know, facing a 5-0 and team, which, you know, is part of the schedule we decided to, to, to test our team with. So, Coach, when you, when you agreed on that out-of-conference schedule, obviously a lot had changed since then, um, a much more experienced team than you might have thought. How do you prep these guys for, for a tough out-of-conference schedule? You know, you take a game to game, Dan. I mean, you know, Northern Colorado presents different challenges than what we did with Albany. I would say Northern Colorado is more similar in, in some regards, but better than BC in that they run a lot of Princeton sets, they let, uh, run a lot of reads off of each other. Um, and so, therefore, I think they're sometimes the toughest teams to match up with. Uh, they go four guards, you know, so we got to look at the size advantage for us and, you know, and, and hope to get the ball inside. And right now, you know, one of our kids, you know, H Haley's struggling. I don't know if she'll be a go at that game or not. So um, hopefully we can take advantage of those opportunities. And that game is on Friday. And, of course, before Friday is Thursday, which, of course, is Thanksgiving. How do you and your team plan on celebrating the holiday? This is new territory because I'm used to being away. So this is the first time in a long time that I've actually been home because we typically take a trip every Thanksgiving. So, um We'll put the call in probably to Boston Market. <laughs> 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 um, that's typically what my husband does. Um, I'm not real great at making the turkey, but we'll find out what the rest of the team is doing. And if there's a couple people that don't have a place to go, we'll invite them over and, 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 and be thankful for everything we have. So, Coach, Mary Golding and Lauren Murphy both made their debut in the Albany game after being sidelined with injury the first two games. How big of a contribution do you expect them to have this season? Well, Lauren's a little bit different than what Mary is. I expect Mary, obviously, to have a huge contribution to us. I mean, Mar Mary was playing extremely well when she got hurt. Like, she was playing at her highest level and probably, arguably, could have been our second best player, you know, to G. Um, and so that was a setback for us, not only just because of what she brings tangibly, what she brings intangibly, because she's a great leader. She's one of our captains. Um, but she, you know, not having her on the court, we've noticed just the time that she's been back, she's made a difference. And, of course, there's, you know, there's kinks to work out in that Albany game. We were limited on the minutes we could play her, so we you had to really watch, you know, three minutes in, and then we were given the fact that she only could have played 15 minutes that game. So we had to really watch when we put her in and, and what minutes we made the most use of. But I think once she's able to get back full, full time, I think she's going to make an immediate impact on the lineup. When do you expect to see her playing the full slate uh, that it, she – could potentially be playing I mean hopefully it, it you know hopefully against Northern Colorado you know I guess it just depends on how she continues to do on this week of practice like you know because 
she's off and on in practice. You know, that she'll do some, you know, she'll do some possessions on and some possessions off. So I think it's just a day to day thing with her right now. Yeah, with someone, I'll sorry about that, Dan. With someone like that, who just goes all out, a hundred percent effort on everything. Do you during practices when she, you know. I know you want your your players to compete and learn how to win in practice, but do you have to like maybe tell her, don't get hurt, <laughs> scale it back a little? I think sometimes you do that, you have better risk of getting hurt when you think about it. Okay. So I think when you don't think about it is when you know you kind of just go out and play. So to be honest, it's something we don't really talk about. So you mentioned the injuries to Mary Golding and now Haley Gillis, as well as Asante Fomina and several other players on this team. So obviously relying heavily on the nine freshmen on this team, what are, what are ways you look for them to improve their game to fill in and, and make the most of those opportunities? My biggest thing is I don't get too caught up in missed shots as long as we get shots. You know, my concern right now is some of the freshmen are turning the ball over too much. I can't do that. You know, you can't be on the court. It's one thing to come in and not – and, and just stabilize us. That's what I'm looking for. But if you come in and hurt us and don't, you know, playing minutes and you're zero across the board and there's turnovers, you know, y you're not going to get more minutes. So for us, it's, you know, being able to take care of the ball and being able to stay focused to our defensive detail. You know, if you do those things, you're going to get minutes and you're going to develop confidence. But it's like this double – edge sore you know the kids were like how can I get confidence if I'm not playing hey if I put you in 10 and you're not doing anything why am I putting you in for 20 mm. you know so you got to be able to prove yourself first of all in practice and then for the minutes you're in there for the game three-point shooting was a bit of an issue in the Albany, Albany game only three of 19 from the uh, beyond the arc I know you guys have a lot of tall players a lot of forwards on this team three of them being in the starting lineup for you guys in the Albany game, are you concerned at all about uh, where you can find scoring from beyond the arc, or is that not as much a part of your game plan this year? I mean, you've got to go with what you're good at. You know, and Mary can go inside and out. Joey's capable of hitting a three if left open. Um, G's worked on her range. Um, so right now we're not going to put the emphasis on that you, we have to take open threes. Right now, you, I mean, I've coached a lot of teams that have taken – six and seven threes you know you don't have to shoot threes to be successful I mean it helped to open up the defense it helps to open up G instead of her being doubled but you know right now we just got to take what is probably working best for us so obviously a challenging out of conference schedule this far with Northern Colorado and UCLA still to come where do you expect this team to be later on in the season let's say during a 10 play or postseason I don't, I don't really get caught up in record-wise. It's just about us taking steps and improving because, like I tell the kids all the time, the more we, we talk about winning the battles to win the war, the more we start to win the battles within the game, the more chances we have to win the game. And so as long as we continue to do that, I think that's going to end up showing itself in conference play. So, you know, we'll take one day at a time, get better at practice. Today we got better, you know, and that's what I tell the kids. I challenge them every day. Our goal is to get better. It's like anything. I tell the kids, like, studying. If you're getting ready for a Spanish test – if you're not studying, you're not prepared for that test. you got to study to make sure you feel confident going to the test. It's the same thing with getting ready for a game. you got to be practicing. you got to be practicing to your best of your ability and to, to feel confident going to that game, and that's our goal. And, Coach, one more question. With, uh, with Thanksgiving coming up only two days away from this point as we are filming this show, what are you most thankful for both in and outside of the game of basketball? You know, in the game of basketball, I'm, I'm thankful for the, the team that I have. I'm thankful for, you know, working at Fordham and the people I work with, including all of you guys, just because it's just an outstanding group of people. I mean, Bob Aarons, what a super leader for you guys. And, you know, I've, and I've gotten, you know, great support from Dave Roach and, and, you know, father. And so, you know, I'm thankful for the opportunity to coach. It's something I love to do. You know, there's a difference between a job and a career. A job makes money, put food on the table. A career is something you have a passion for. You know, off the court, I'm thankful for my f my faith and my family. I mean, faith and family to me and friends are the three most important things in my life. And so um, I think that if you have them, th then you're probably going to have a, a very fulfilled life. Without a doubt, Coach, thank you for joining us today, as always, on the Stephanie Gately Show. And be sure to tune in this Friday as the Fordham Rams take on Northern Colorado. Tip-off is at 7 o'clock, and we'll be on at 6.55 with a one-on-one pregame report only on WFUV Sports 
www.ghostofthecoast.org. We'll see you then. Thank you.